Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to the Sleeve Donard Resort and Spa here in Newcastle in County Down in Northern Ireland. I'm here for the Classic Car Show for 2020. We've got a fantastic selection of cars on display this year. And joining me again is Bill Forsyth. Bill, thank you very much for having me again this okay. year. No problem, you're very welcome to this 26th year which yeah. is fantastic for us to be able to run for 26 years showing cars that have not been seen before uh, and uh, our stock as you will see here yeah. uh, is absolutely stunning absolutely stunning we have 50 vehicles to look at here uh, you will probably see them all you may not uh, uh, get history about them all but they're all here to see <laughs> i think we should start off and have a walk around let's do it guys okay. let's check it out Okay, Bill, starting us off, this really old vintage car here. What can you tell us about this? Well, this particular car, this would be the oldest car in, uh, in the hall, in the ballroom. This car is 100 years old, 100 years old, and it's a French car, uh, and it's uh, titled Le Zebra. Now, this French car is very unique, uh, and I learned something about this car in the fact that it's right-hand drive. Oh, right-hand yeah. drive, but it's a French car. <laughs> now, you'd wonder why. But in actual fact, 100 years ago, no, there was no such thing as a left-hand drive car in France. They were all made right-hand drive. Right. I don't know at what point they changed over to left-hand drive, but this is a 100-year-old Le Zebra, uh, and I'm told that there's only uh, a maximum of five of these vehicles left in existence. Uh, and here we have one that is unrestored, and it will be left unrestored. Wow. It would be wrong to start and restore that car. It doesn't need restored. It's all one piece. Uh, yeah. It's all in reasonable shape. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> that's a good feature about that. <laughs> <coughs> There's no doubt. So, um, Le Zebra, 100 years old, which we are very pleased to have here yeah. at the show. So, just passing a 1950 Austin A40 Devon from the Austin of England. But then yeah. we'll slip into this very unique car with history, yeah. a Rolls-Royce, a 1960 Rolls-Royce. But yeah. what makes this car special is that an actress, Diana Doors, uh, was the first uh, actress to actually own a Rolls-Royce of her age. Wow. Now she started acting when she was 14 and she was on the stage by the time she was 16 and by the time she had a license this is Diana Doors' car. Right. Now, for those who don't know Diana Doors, for those who are too young to remember, she was the Marilyn Monroe uh, of, of uh, drama and music. And Diana Doors, unfortunately, she passed away in 1984 at a very early age of 54. 54. Which was unfortunate, but uh, glamour, absolute glamour. Yeah. We actually have the, the log textbook of the vehicle. Uh, with Diana Doors' name and address in the tax book, just oh, to wow. prove that. And of course the registration speaks for itself. Yeah. She had to have the registration with a letter D, Diana <laughs> Doors. <laughs> so that vehicle, how it made its way to Northern Ireland, I don't know, but here we have it. Uh, so we've brought a big piece of history in terms of uh, drama and acting yeah. uh, and uh, a, great, a great title of Rolls-Royce. Uh, and to come with that a great title of Diana Doors. Yeah, she was a big actress in her day. She was indeed. Now, Bill, this is a very small car <laughs> parked next well, to the Rolls. Well, <laughs> when it sits next door to the Rolls, yeah. it certainly is tiny. And yeah. Austin 7. And, of course, these were made in England, in Coventry, and they were, right. that's a 1930 car. And then on to the Volvo. Uh, the Volvo, yes. The mm. Volvo car, obviously, made in Sweden, 1967. This is a particularly uh, unusual one because it is, uh, as you look at it, almost in rally form. It doesn't have a roll cage, but it does have the spotlights and the uh, yeah. alloy wheels, the mini light alloy wheels. This particular one uh, is owned by an enthusiast, a rally enthusiast, and uh, it came all the way from Inniskillen down to the show. And um, it's a nice car from 1967. Very good. Absolutely wonderful. And the Rover. And the Rover P5. B, 1970. Again, a very prestigious car, a very comfortable car, uh, V8 in general, and chrome Ross tile wheels. Again, a lovely, lovely car. 
Now is this Ford Granada? Oh, well, box? this Ford Granada, you <laughs> see, this is where uh, I have the soft point uh, yeah. for Ford and for Ford Granada. Out of all the vehicles, uh, as you will see in the show as we go through it, yeah. this is the vehicle that I would take home. Yeah. And you would wonder why, but I just am passionate about this particular car. Now, this is a Mark I Ford Granada yeah. uh, from 1974, and it's a three-litre gear, three gear in bronze metallic. It's even got the plastic on the seats yeah. just to protect the seats. Uh, <laughs> Incredible bit. Of course, you know, the manual sunroof, the manual yeah. metal sunroof, uh, yeah. but it has got... Um, <coughs> Now, Bill, I've, uh, <laughs> I've a bit of a story to tell about one of these. <laughs> you might not be too happy, but uh, back in 1988, I bought one of these for £100. Oh. And we destroyed it with a forklift. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> not good. We did. That's a very sad story. <laughs> yeah, we got it in blue and we painted it with uh, emulsion paint. We painted it white. Oh, that's even and worse. we destroyed it with a forklift and I videoed it. Right. And I don't know where the tape is, but uh, there are a couple of people that can verify I that. I don't really want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. really want to see that. But uh, yeah, I mean, Ford enthusiasts would be kicking me up the rear end. They would uh, indeed. If they saw that tape, but... Uh, they would. Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. And yeah. there's very low mileage in that car. Um, and it's, it's, um, its owner has a collection of cars, which would be similar to that in terms of condition. The work on these cars is just... Well, it's, it's endless. Yeah. It's endless, but I mean, the guys that do it, they're, they're, they're passionate about it. They want to do it right. They want to do it correctly. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, if they want into the show, they have to do it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> because we, we're not, we're not fussy fussy, but we like quality, uh, a good standard of show mm. car. Uh, now, of course, the car that sits next to it uh, is a Ford Zodiac, automatic, automatic again. Uh, but this vehicle, has got a straight six cylinder engine in it, mm. whereas the Ford Granada has got a Ford V6 oh, yeah. uh, uh, engine in it. So one three liter, and this one here is a straight six. Yeah. And again, it's a beautiful, comfortable, large car, uh, automatic transmission and two-tone paintwork as it was in those days, and that's a 1960 car. That car, that car is the same age as that white rolls right up there. And yeah. yet the two cars are t so far apart. Yeah. So far apart in design. In styling, yeah. And now we're going to bounce into a small car again. We're going from large to small. The smallest uh, one, I would imagine. The smallest car here, <laughs> yes. Smaller yeah. than the Austin 7 that we've just looked at. Uh, BMW uh, 300i had a bubble car. And yeah. of course, from 1961. Uh, and it's a two-seater car. Yeah. Uh, Bill, we have this Modus. Well, it's a Modus. Midas, it's a Midas, sorry, Midas. Yes, it's a yeah. Midas, yes. Yeah. Uh, all based on a Mini. Uh, yeah. It's a bit like a Mini Marcus. Uh, a Mini Marcus has got a fiberglass body. This is a fiberglass body, but it's all based with Mini engine and suspension and what have you. Uh, and I have to say that that, that yeah. is very nicely presented in white and yellow. And Bill, if you can just open up the door there just to show them the the dashboard, even the way that it's angled in towards you, look. Yes, uh, a, yeah. great, a great design, a great design, uh, and yeah, it's in great condition. a two-seater vehicle, of course. Yeah. A very nice car indeed. Very oh, distinctive very looking. Very pleased to nowadays. have that, yes, yeah. very, very, very pleased to have that. Now, Bill, up ah. on the shelf. On the shelf, we'll start with this Nova from 1985, and you think, you know, why have we a 1985 Nova? But this Nova has been built nut and bolt restoration, nothing left untouched in terms of it has to be brand new. The washers, the bolts, the nuts, everything had to be brand new on build. It was stripped down and as you can see there's a mirror to like oh, to yeah, see it's underneath it. There, so uh, it's probably better than it came out of the factory because wow. it's had more paint and better bolts and rust free this and rust free that. Yeah. So that's a Nova Sport. Again, a very collectible car these days. 1985. Quite a lot of Nova Sports made, yes. Uh, uh, and that one is, is really, really well put together. Yeah. Really well put together. And just when we're up here, just we'll just yeah. spin round for a second or two just to look at these two beautiful bikes. Yeah. Uh, BSA Bantam from 1968. Uh, and then we have a Honda CD175. Uh, the both bikes you would think when you look at them because of colour you think they were identical or at least close but they're not. Mm. But that's a BSA and that's 
and there's a Honda, uh, and then the Northern, Northern race bike. So um, it's it's a stunning example as well. Yeah. And we like to keep them up in here in this little corner, and they're safe, so they're not toppled over. Yeah. Now, we don't often get a 1275 GT Clubman. We don't often get the Clubman actually. We get plenty of minis, yeah. but the Clubman's a bit unique. And this is a 1275 GT Clubman, really a mini at the end of the day, uh, but. They had a different front and different wings, and they had the Ross tile wheel, and they had the stripes up the side at the bottom of the door. Yeah. That's a 1972 example, uh, and it's a lovely car. It's a lovely and car. And the 1956 Austin A35. Okay. In Farina Grey. Yeah. And then, of course, we have <coughs> a collector who supplies us vehicles every year, and this is one of his examples. Uh, 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 well, restored by him, but not owned by him. Uh, but this one here is the Cooper S from 1967 and nice. that is just uh, off the assembly line. That's just what that is, just off the assembly line, ready to go to work. Where do these guys get all the parts? Oh, and the parts for minis are easy enough, God. Yeah. Uh, everything's reproduced. There are only some vehicles that are very difficult to get parts for. Uh, if you bought... Um, say, a Mark II Cortina or something like that, there would be parts that you couldn't get. You'd have to refabricate or, you know, fabricate parts that you couldn't buy. The, the Minis, the Morris Miners, uh, the Mark I Aspers, the Mark II Aspers, everything can be got now. Everything can be got. It has become a business to actually make things for these cars. So, of course, the other vehicle that I would like to take home would be this. <laughs> this is the Mini Pickup. Yeah. And this Mini Pickup has got a full restoration. And look at it. Look at it, it is absolutely stunning. Inside and out, everything. D the detail in that is unbelievable. The panels, the doors fit perfect. Everything about it is correct. Yeah, it looks great now. And just as a, a point of interest on a Mini, if you're restoring a Mini van or a Mini pickup, as you can see, if you come around to the front here, it doesn't have the chrome grill. In fact, the grill doesn't come out. Oh, it's yeah. the complete panel. Yeah. So that. That panel is very difficult to get. You just can't buy that. Uh, some boys will, some restorers will actually buy a van or a pickup and they have to put a grill in it, like this mini grill here, they have yeah. to put a grill in it. And that spoils it. That takes the original they away from. But these panels are very hard to get. Obviously this panel was repairable or maybe didn't need repaired and it belongs to the vehicle. Yeah. But that mini pickup from 1982 uh, just Oh, just, just perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. And we're back to Nova again. So we have a white Nova at the end and a black Nova at this end. And that's an 1989 uh, SR Nova. And again, a, a light restoration, a light restoration, not... I like, not the, I like the sign on the window, look. Yes. Small yet handles well over a ton. It does, huh? it does. Absolutely lovely. Is that a, does that mean 100 miles an hour or a ton uh, well, in kilos? Well, well, it would be 100 miles an hour, that's not a problem. Like, you could squeeze that out of it all right. Yeah. Okay, so we will move on a bit more swiftly now as we walk down through the show and we'll start with this Tram TR7, again a replica car, uh, not, not a genuine rally car but built and made to look like a rally car and of course it's got the V8 engine on it which is the same engine as that Rover P5B over there, uh, again owned by an enthusiast that uh, does everything to detail, yeah. great detail in that car, that's from 1980 that car. So that's the Triumph TR7 V8. It didn't start its life out as a V8. <laughs> Moving on to a Rallycross Metro. Now, the Rallycross Metro, you would think, well, there's a Metro engine in there, but in actual fact, the engine, as the two assistants will help to re remove this bonnet. As you can see, that's not a Metro engine. <laughs> it says Ford in the top of it. Right. But you could put whatever you like on that. You, you, you could put a Vauxhall Ford red top on that, but this one has a Ford twin cam on it with twin waivers. Uh, and that has been built for the purpose of Rallycross. But I think from the owner's talk, it'll never see a Rallycross. 
and yeah. just as it is. So it's, it's again well built, well painted, and yeah, we'll all, just have a quick look inside. All done build. in works colours. Yeah. And lightweight doors and perspex windows and all the rest of it. So uh, very fast car. Yeah. Very fast car. So uh, not a matter as we know it. Not a matter of as we know. I think it. you would call that a dog box, is it? Uh, it's a dog box. <laughs> yes, that's a dog Just box. Just dog it into yes, gear. Absolutely. <laughs> and behind that, we're in yeah. the rally again. Yeah. Only this time we're into Avenger. 1974 Avenger. Again, uh, made into a rally car. Mm -hmm. And the same story again. After the owner had it finished, no, he's not going to do any events. <laughs> he's just going to keep it as it is. <laughs> um, it really should have the blue decals of it, like yeah. your Ford RS2000 decal, uh, but uh, it hasn't received that as yet, and it might not receive it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's in the rally again. Now, of course, we'll stay in the rally theme of the minute uh, to this, oh, yes. this Lancia Delta. Yeah. Albeit the most of them that we would have had here, we've had them before, left-hand drive. This one's right-hand drive, All right. which is rather odd for us, really, to be honest. Uh, that's a very fast car. A very fast car uh, and handles well. Not that many of them left or seen that are in good uh, condition, but this one is 1989, owned by uh, a guy who has also an Audi Quattro, uh, and uh, it's just the same condition as this car here. We'll just continue on down here with this uh, 1977 Opel, Opel Ascona. Yeah. Uh, this Opel Ascona is owned by an Opel uh, enthusiast. He has Vauxhall and Opel, mostly Opel, and he's been bringing us cars now for years. Uh, I assume we're going to exhaust him at some point, where he'll no, have no Opels left. <laughs> but so far, again, another stunning example of an Opel Ascona 2-liter SR. That was a great car in its day. That was competing against uh, Cortinas and, uh, you know, the likes, uh, like a family car almost. Well, we always have a tractor every year, and uh, we like to get a tractor with a bit of history or an unusual yeah. tractor. This is uh, a Gray Ferguson tractor, but of course the title of it is a gold belly. As you can see, the engine oh, yeah. uh, and uh, the diff of the gearbox is gold. So it's called a gold belly. It's an FE35, and really it's like the red Massey Ferguson 35, only a square in gold. So that's the gold belly uh, that appeared in around 1957. Uh, and that was a great, a great tractor with great power. That's a four-cylinder diesel. Uh, that, that tractor has been restored. Yeah. And of course, you know, the tractors would never have been as good as that in terms of paintwork, but there we are. Three Hillman amps, uh, one being a rally one. Uh, the blue one with a white stripe is a rally amp. Mm. And uh, uh, the one in the middle here is uh, a deluxe. The Hillman Imps were built in Scotland. This oh is where they were built. They were built in Scotland. Um, and they're, begin they're beginning to be uh, uh, coming out of the woodwork now because uh, they've been hidden away there. The minis had sort of taken over uh, shows and what have you. But the Hillman Imps are now coming out. There's a great, a great Hillman Imp Club uh, in the south of Ireland. And the Imp folk are growing up here as well in terms of cars. This is a genuine rally imp that would have came from the factory as you see it you could just buy that and drive it and rally it immediately as you can see inside uh, uh, you have everything in rally form you have the bucket seats the anti-roll or the the yes the anti-roll bar and uh, your master switches and no car but just the heel board uh, that that hillman imp 998 cc I mean, it, it, it's, it's just unreal that, that that would be. And of course, the Hellman Imps would have been rallied years and years ago when you would have thought, you know, it was a small car, rear engine, uh, air cooled and what have you. But yeah. it, it's, it's a remarkable car, a remarkable car. And did win rallies, did win rallies by the famous Rosemary Smith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> Rosemary Smith had a, had a, a, yeah. had a Hellman Imp and still has. This would be our feature car here. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited to have this car. Mm. We looked long and hard for it, but uh, we were able to win the battle to allow it to come. Um, and then when it did come, 
we had a problem getting it in here because of the width of the vehicle. All oh, right, okay. And that BMW Series One won the championship in 2014 by Colin Turkington from Northern Ireland. All right. Uh, that car would be the most expensive car we have in the hall, somewhere between four and five hundred thousand. And what sort of power is in these, Bill? The power, I don't know the brake horse of that, but I'm sure yeah. it's upwards on 800 uh, bhp, I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Most people use the term XR3i, but that's not an I. That's yeah. the early one. It was not injection, carburetor model. So that's the very early Ford Escort XR3, not I broke an a clutch on an sorry. XR3i once. It's what, sorry? I broke a clutch oh, you broke it. <laughs> on an XR3 I once. Oh, right. Well, my excuse was uh, I just helped it. Oh, you just um, helped it. It was on the way out. Right. <laughs> I just helped it. But uh, yeah, that was an XR3 I. It was a 1988 example that, that I broke the clutch on. Sunbeam. Now you're looking at this. I'm going to use the word sunbeam. But this is an Avenger, but it's called a Hellman Avenger Sunbeam left hand drive Aye. GT. This is a very rare car. Very rare car. But it's entitled Sunbeam, yeah. not, not Avenger. They weren't labelled when they were left hand drive and they were made in a different country. They were entitled Sunbeam. Yeah. The Toyota Celica from 1972. This one has been on the TV program SOS, Car SOS. Oh yeah, Fuzz Townsend. Uh, you know, the full rebuild. And yeah. it's going to be re-televised again uh, very soon this year, because they do re you know, repeat their programs. But this one has been on, uh, and it has been rebuilt from a very poor standard. And now it's back up again. 1975, 2002, as we know it, in appearance. But in actual fact, it's a 1502. Oh yeah. There's a 1502. Yeah. 1502, there's a 1602, and then there's a 2002. This is the early one, and it's a 1502. Lovely, lovely example yeah. of a BMW. Because there was an example before this that, that had round rear lamps. Yes, that's right, there was. Yeah. We'll have a look at this unusual Renault 12. Well, it's not unusual really, other than the, that the colour, there was a lot of Renault 12s were just basic colours, reds and blues and greens. This one's a lovely metallic bronze colour. Uh, there's hardly any miles on it. It's automatic transmission, would you believe? And the body is absolutely super. Yeah. Wonderful car. From 1977, that one. Yeah. And in front of that setting is an MGA. Now, this MGA was manufactured in 1959. Uh, and of course, the, the vehicle that came after that was the MGB. But this is the MGA. And uh, this MGA was registered in 1960, but built in 1959. Uh, and that would be Snowberry White, that vehicle. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. And we can't have the show, of course, without a Ford Anglia. And yeah. here this 1965 Ford Anglia with wide steel wheels on it. Five oh, and yeah. a half GS steel wheels on it. Which most of the people that had an interest in their cars at all, they would put a wider wheel on it. And that one had the wide wheel. Yeah. And just to finish in the corner, we have an MG Maestro EFI, not an MG Maestro Turbo, but an EFI. And that vehicle has 18,000 miles on it. That has never been touched or restored. Wow. Uh, and uh, that vehicle, that MG Maestro EFI, allegedly is quicker than a GTI Golf. <laughs> and it's time. Right. And it's time. And handles just as well. Right. So there we are. Yeah. That's, that's the 2020 show. That's it uh, in its entirety. Uh, we are pleased with uh, all the spectators that have attended. We are pleased that you, Stavros, have come to witness the fact that we have one of the best collections ever. And we would love to keep them all. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, my car, I want to take the Granada 3 litre gear home, and I don't want to hear your story <laughs> about, about painting one with white emulsion and destroying it with I a forklift. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. And that's where I'm going to leave you all today from the Sleeve Donard Resort and Spa in Newcastle in Northern Ireland. What a great show, guys. Fantastic display of cars. 
The standard is just so high at this show. My sixth year coming now and 26 years running. And it's all for cancer research, all the collection here today. But uh, yeah, I had a great time. But I have something to announce to all of you. Yes, I am actually after buying a classic car. And I will be revealing it very soon on the channel. And not only that, but uh, in February, there's a big announcement of a truck coming. I can't say what it is, but it's going to be big. <laughs> so make sure you're subscribed, guys. Make sure you put a thumbs up for this video. And I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching. Cheers! <laughs> now you're supposed to talk for the sound test. <laughs> Bill Forsyth. Bill. <laughs> no, you need to walk in. <laughs> no. um, good morning. No, you yes. need to walk in. You need to walk here. Take three. Take three. <laughs>